Hey YouTube, hope everybody out there is safe and healthy. Uh, I wanted to post this video at the end of last year, but it had some problems with technology in general. So usually I just do no talking, demos, pedals, guitars, amps, but I wanted to do some music reviews of some of my favorite releases from this past year. So you'll hear me talking in this one, just like with guitar reviews, you probably see some of my face. I apologize. A couple of quick uh, honorable mentions at the gates. Pretty good stuff. Kind of getting back to that old school at the gate sound. Gojira, I feel like these guys are really coming uh, to that point of being like big, big, big band, you know, as far as metal goes. Same thing with Mastodon. I actually really like this. There's a lot of chunky guitar parts on it. There's a lot of not so chunky guitar parts on it. Is it still metal? Yeah, I think so. But, uh, you know, definitely not old school. I put on remission after listening to this and was like, this is still the same band, but very different. And Tomahawk. Uh, not necessarily metal, but pretty cool alt noise rock stuff. Yeah, so those are kind of just the honorable mention ones. And then some that I found out from YouTube, in my YouTube feed gave me some uh, interesting artists this, this past year, year and a half. I'm going to mispronounce this. Angela Zapatrida, I think. They're from Spain, so I'm destroying that Spanish pronunciation. Good thrash band, pretty awesome. Um, these guys, yeah. Really good stuff. This one's got a little bit more kind of a, yeah, a little bit more of a slight death metal feel just because a lot less clean singing. Their previous one from this that I also picked up at the same time has a lot more melodic clean singing on it. This one's a little bit more chanty, kind of Slayer-esque in that sense, but great songwriting, great riffs, got a really great shredder, great drummer. Yeah, just a good band all around. Check them out. These are in no particular order besides alphabetical. Another one that I found out in my music feed from YouTube, based from Denmark, Danish death metal band. Uh, bought all three of their releases. The very first one was very much that uh, Gothenburg, Sunlight Studios, Boss HM2 pedal, buzzsaw kind of sound. Then they've kind of transitioned away from that a bit, and then this one's much less that, but still the style is just old school death metal in a lot of ways, but certain elements of thrash and stuff to it. Uh, great riffs, songwriting is really pretty solid. They're getting better and better. Uh, they're really good shredders too, but they don't play enough solos on this album. I wish they had more solos on this. And there's there's some good ones. Um, another thing too is they just released a new video for a live, a like shot live in the studio for a new uh, music that they've recorded. It isn't on this album. Had a bunch of great twin guitar lead lines through it. It's great solo stuff. So hopefully that's kind of the direction they're moving. This one I found when I was out vinyl shopping. I uh, just started collecting a lot of vinyl this year after my family bought me a new record player for Christmas present in 2020. This is Bewitcher, local Portland, Oregon band. Uh, old school metal kind of sound here. A lot of, I hear a lot of Motorhead, a lot of maybe Kill 'Em All era Metallica, you know? Good stuff, really cool. Check them out. Okay, this one I waited for quite a while. I was really looking forward to this, was hoping it would come out in 2020. Of course, Carcass, Torn Arteries, they went ahead and released that EP to kind of tie it all the fans over, but they weren't going to release something because they couldn't tour. They couldn't, you know, use it, make some money, right? So everybody's making money now is touring and merch and all that stuff. Anyways, this is a great record. I love this album. It's fantastic. Um, you know, you can't go wrong. It's Bill Steer and Jeff Walker and then Dan Wilding, their new drummer, who's been around now for several years with them, but since they're, you know, reunited. Um, yeah, Surgical Steel was great. This is great. Really enjoy it. And uh, on top of that, I pre-ordered this one to get the pretty colored vinyl and they accidentally sent me the CD and I was like, hey, uh, I'm pretty sure I ordered the vinyl. And they're like, yeah, whoops, sorry, just keep the CD and we'll send you the vinyl. So cool stuff. I love collecting the, uh, the crazy colors, right? There's another band that I couldn't find on vinyl, but I found out about from my YouTube feed. Oh, sorry, it's just gonna reflect the camera there. Anyways, Crypta, uh, great band. I really like these guys, yeah, these women. Uh, this is, uh, let's see, two thirds of Nervosa that side, formed this as a side project to do more death metal, I guess. And then, um, then they ended up quitting Nervosa and doing this full time. And this is the debut that came out this year. It's pretty great death metal stuff. Um, the drummer, Luan, Luana D'Amato, she's a beast. 
She's amazing. That's kind of what really got me into it was seeing one of her uh, drum playthroughs of some of the songs on this album. Amazing, amazing drummer. And I'm talking, let's get rid of the whole, oh, best female drummer crap. No, man, she puts everybody to shame, okay? Great metal drummer. But the rest of the stuff is pretty great too. Great riffs, songwriting, a little bit in that kind of old school death metal. Um, anyways, check them out. Really good stuff. Okay. This one's maybe not a metal album, <laughs> but they are definitely a metal band. Death Heaven, Infinite Granite. Um, they've gone almost full shoegaze on this, and that's it. Uh, lead singer is definitely channeling his inner Ian Curtis, I think. That's kind of who I identify it with. Not quite in the same range vocally, but um, emotionally, things like that. You know, he just kind of has that sort of feel like old Joy Division to me in a way. Um, you don't hear a single double bass uh, kick drum part until about the fourth song, fifth song in, and there's no blast beats until the last two minutes of the last song. And that's the only time that you have a very solid, steady, not clean singing portion as well. The rest of the album is clean singing, melodic, all of it. There's a couple of little transition points with non-clean singing between you know parts and songs, but it's kind of buried in the mix. Why did I include it in one of my favorites as far as like metal? Because that's pretty much all I listen to. It's beautiful sounding, much like the Mastodon too. The layering, the guitar parts, everything in this sounds fantastic. It's a great album. I would recommend anybody pick it up. It's going to confuse people if they haven't listened to any of their old music. You can hear what this is in their past releases, but they've just gone full bore in one particular direction with this, which is interesting. So check it out. One that a good friend of mine recommended. Uh, this is a guy that listens to a lot of stuff on Spotify and checks out like all the new releases and then just tells me anything that he thinks, you know, mentions things that he thinks metal-wise and heavier-wise that I meant like, hadn't heard of these guys before, Green Lung. Fantastic doom band. Um, he was hearing it more like kind of a new wave of British heavy metal, kind of Iron Maiden guitars, you know, kind of that classic metal. And I'm like, well, I hear a lot of Sabbath. And then after I listen to it more, I'm like, I hear Sabbath and I kind of hear some Queen. And sure enough, it's kind of what the guitar player is going for is what if Brian May was in Black Sabbath? I think he captures a good chunk of it on this one. Um, you know, he said he got some comparisons on his first, on the first album to, of all people, Death Clock. Well, guess what? There's a lot of the same guitar harmony stuff from Queen in Death Clock too, so it kind of makes sense. Anyways, great album. Really, really have enjoyed this one a lot. This is one I didn't know came out until the almost the end of the year, and I felt bad, but I've been listening to it a lot since in the last couple of weeks. Chemists. Uh, really like these guys, all their past stuff too. Didn't know they had a brand new one out, so I'm really happy this one's out. And I'm also excited that I'm supposed to go see them live in about a week, which will be great. It'll be the third live show I've seen in the last two years, which sucks. But, you know, it's crazy out there. So hopefully this one does go through and I feel comfortable going and being in a crowd of people in a room. Yeah, okay. Another one that I heard about from my YouTube feed, King Woman. This is amazing. I think they're out of San Francisco. Um, doom, definitely very doomy, but the vocals on this, the songwriting that goes around it, uh, just the emotion in it is amazing. It's great. It sounds fantastic. Um, reading up on it and seeing some interviews with the lead singer, there's, you know, some abuse and things in her past and this is basically catharsis to kind of get through it is how I understood it from the, the interviews and and uh, things that I read and it, she just lays it all out it is so emotional and it's great check them out and kind of a little bit of a different one uh, tribulation again I, I consider them a metal band but they're kind of a proto metal band it's like kind of British early, early. It's not Sabbath-y. It's a little bit kind of proggy. I don't know. They just defy category. And yet the vocals are all kind of death metal-y. Um, the, the members all sort of wear kind of corpse paint, you know? I mean, it's kind of this weird amalgamation of different genres and doesn't really fit in any one particular. Um, unfortunately, their founding guitarist quit after this. 
they're doing their own thing, their own solo stuff. Um, so we'll see what happens with the band from here out, but it was, you know, a good, um, good spot for the guitarist to leave on. This is pretty amazing work. I did like probably their earlier last one a little better, but still really good stuff. One of the few somewhat black metal bands, Woad, also combines a lot of kind of um, old school, I think old school British metal on it as well, but this is great. This is a really good album. Was also looking forward to this one when I found out that it was getting released. Uh, really liked their last one a lot. And this one's continuing on that same trajectory to me. I feel like it just keeps, they just keep getting better and better. And finally, last but not least, more traditional kind of black metal. I'm not a huge black metal guy, but Wolves in the Throne Room, you cannot go wrong with this. These guys are great. And, uh, you know, that kind of whole Northwest pagan um, environmental black metal thing is kind of how I view them, you know, uh, which is, they, I just think they sound cool. They sound great. This one, you actually have bass lines you can hear that actually kind of help propel the songs along, which is not something you normally hear in any kind of traditional black metal. And I don't know if I really consider these guys traditional black metal, but I just mean that they're closest to that genre from any of the other bands that I listen to. So, all right. That was my best of, um, to tell you the truth, these are all the releases that I really enjoyed this year. Even the shout outs to the, uh, the uh, honorable mentions that are not necessarily on my best of list for this year. The best album to me of the year, definitely. Carcass, Torn Arteries. This thing is close to flawless as far as I'm concerned right up there with some of the real classic output. All right, hope you guys stay safe. Hope you guys stay healthy. And I hope 2022 is better for all of us.